Hey everybody, this is Terry. We're here for the Proto School Community Call, which is now monthly on uh, November 7th. So uh, we have just a few updates for you today, but they're exciting ones with new stuff that we've released. So I will let Jill start us off with a new tutorial. Okay, so we have a new tutorial on the regular files API, which I will begin sharing right now, if I can find the right screen. Here we go. Can you see it? Yes. Okay, so we have the outline for the new tutorial. We go through the difference between this, this API and the BAG API and the MFS API, which we already have a tutorial on. We talk about how we work with files in ProtoSchool, how we add a file using this API, read the contents of a file, also add files into a directory, list of files of a directory with a file in a directory and getting all the files of the directory. So we go all of the all of the most basic use cases for this API. And the, one of the most important parts about this course is uh, this tutorial is discussing the, the differences between this API and the MFS API, which as I said, we already have a tutorial on. So feel free to check it out and give us feedback if you do. And I think we can move on to. Yeah, the, the most point. interesting thing that I learned while helping a bit with this one was about the wrap with directory option uh, when you add a file. So when you're not using the mutable file system, there is still a little bit of flexibility to use um, some file names in your paths instead of just CIDs. That's one of the things that can be challenging for people. So keep an eye out for that trick if you check this out. And then let me find the thing I want to share with you. So if you go to the the website repo right now in the readme, this used to have all of the instructions for building a tutorial. So in view, what are the files that you need to make? How do you do the validation? All of those really technical pieces. And what we've done now is added a whole section. You see we've broken out the files, but we've added a new section on designing effective tutorials. So this starts with the process of um, looking at what are our principles, so making sure that we have beginner-friendly content, that we have the scaffolding, that we need to get people up to more advanced content, that we're doing things cohesively, so we're not creating, creating one-off things that don't fit with the material that we're offering. Um, and then it goes through what the process is for sort of suggesting a new idea for a tutorial and getting feedback from the group. We can help you kind of lay out an outline, Make sure you're in good shape before you start building a tutorial so that you're not uh, sort of spinning your wheels during the process. Um, and then uh, this also talks a bit about sort of the capabilities and limitations of our platform. So for example, you need to be building browser-based code challenges. Um, so that means that they're going to be JavaScript like JS IPFS um, challenges in the browser. We support IPFS, but we don't yet support libp2p. All these kinds of details you can find here. So if you're trying to decide whether building a tutorial is right for you, this is a great place to start. And we do ask you to read this in its entirety uh, before you actually build anything. Um, and we have some tips also about things like using inclusive language or chunking things out step by step. So you're just teaching one content, one um, one lesson at a time, like one little tidbit. Um, also stuff about the way that you present API methods, some tips that will kind of help beginners. A lot of the times that both uh, Jill and I have run into the problem where we realize that you have to use some of the more complex JavaScript methods to complete a tutorial, and we're trying to teach something about IPFS, not about JavaScript. So ways that you can give people support on the JavaScript side so that that's not the challenge they're facing. Um, and some stuff about the feedback that you give users. So this content is all new. And you'll find, if you're looking for the content that was here before, it's now in the Developing Tutorials page, what you used to find in the README is over here. So all of the detail about the files that you create and all of that jazz is still here, it's just been moved a little bit. 
So that's um, the other new piece that we're super excited about. And then I'm just gonna take a quick look at our notes and see what else we've done lately. Um, we fixed a couple of um, smaller issues like updating the, updating the instructions for running your local server or fixing the way that capitalization works under the hood, just a few pieces here and there. We have some new organizers that were added to our Bangalore chapter. Um, and that's, yeah, we've been pouring a lot of time into the new tutorial. So that's where a lot of our stuff is happening right now. Um, we also have some work underway working on um, creating a, a template slide deck that people can use. And Molly's also working on creating a sort of introduction to IPFS um, guide. So there are a few things underway that we hope to have for you possibly later this quarter if things work out. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for our updates. Is there anything that you wanted to share from Tokyo? Oh, yeah, as to the template that uh, Mori suggested, I actually received uh, uh, the good one from um, Steven. I think it is already shared with you already, but I think it covers it covers most of the IPFS core um, knowledge. So it's a really good start point so that we can share yeah. with all the chapters. Yeah, and Molly's going through that presentation that Stephen gave. She, it sounds like she's made a few updates to the presentation itself, but she's mm -hmm. also going to build out the speaker notes. And then we're planning on sharing a video of Stephen delivering that presentation. So if you were going to present it, you could watch his first and make sure things yeah. feel comfortable to you before That'll you do be it. Very, so very we're nice working on, yeah, we're working on kind oh. of gathering up those resources. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay. Anything else people would like to chat about today? You had a couple of events out there recently, didn't you? Yeah, I had uh, two events uh, uh, before DevCon Osaka and after uh, DevCon Osaka. So, and I got a typhoon. So <laughs> I have to reschedule like uh, three times. So it's kind of hard to manage all the venues yeah. and things. But, but uh, well, it ended up, end up with a really great uh, opportunity to introduce IPFS to Japanese local um, developers as well as international developers. And um, yeah, I also created an IRC channel so that people can stay connected with each other. So I think it's great. nice, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Anything else people want to chat about before we go? Okay, so my just one quick reminder is that we've changed the scheduling of this meeting to be monthly instead of weekly. So that means it'll be the first Thursday of December that we'll see each other next. And that same, um, there's one GitHub issue about this meeting that I just keep updating and reminding people of the new time and the link to join us. So. Keep an eye there if you'd like to join. And we will see you all next month with more updates. But feel free to follow along on the progress on GitHub as we go. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.